Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the Echo Atlantic project located in Lagos. This is part of Paper 2, Unit A, Urban Issues and Challenges. Echo Atlantic City is a highly ambitious urban development project which is being built on reclaimed land along the coast in Lagos. It is an example of a top-down approach to improve quality of life of some of the city's residents. An estimated $6 billion will be spent on the project, bringing benefits that trickle down to the poorest in Lagos. It will focus on innovation and technology and aims to be the new financial centre of Nigeria and West Africa, with many people calling it Africa's answer to Dubai. And you can probably see why from the artist's impression, which is on the screen. It is hoped that Echo Atlantic City will trigger a multiplier effect of additional benefits to Lagos. It is estimated that the new city will create between 150,000 to 350,000 jobs. Firstly in the construction phase and then once the development is up and running within the TNCs that locate there. There will also be jobs created indirectly in supplier services such as food deliveries and cleaning. Those workers will spend their money in Lagos which will increase the demand for other local services creating further jobs. These jobs are likely to be formal, which will generate tax, which can then fund infrastructure improvements such as transport, power, water supply and sanitation. Better infrastructure then makes Lagos more attractive to businesses looking to locate to West Africa, so other TNCs and companies will move into the city, which creates further jobs. Climate resilience is at the heart of this project. 10 square kilometres of land is being reclaimed from the Atlantic Ocean to build Echo Atlantic City. Developers argue that this will reduce the threat of coastal erosion to the CBD of Lagos, which is home to the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Central Bank and the headquarters of numerous TNCs. It will also protect Victoria Island, which has faced severe floods in the past and has lost 2 kilometres of land to the sea over the last decade, as groins and beach nourishment have failed. A major part of the project is a 9 metre high and 8.5 kilometre long concrete barrier named the Great Wall of Lagos. This is being built to protect Echo Atlantic City from severe storms in the future. However, there are concerns that this wall is actually increasing the risk for some poor Lagosians in neighbouring areas, as storm surges are now directed further along the coast to an area which is no stranger to storm surges anyway. In 2012, the neighbourhood of Karamo Beach was battered by a huge storm surge which killed 16 people and displaced 1,500. In response, the government sent in armed men and bulldozers to destroy the remaining homes and shops to prevent a similar disaster in the future, despite people here having nowhere else to go. Climate scientists claim that the increasing severity of these surges is due to the sand-filling activity that is taking place on Echo Atlantic. Many have argued that Echo Atlantic will only really benefit the wealthier Lagosians and that what's being made is a city for the elite. 90 million cubic metres of sand has been dredged from the Atlantic Ocean to create a new island 8 kilometres long, which is going to be a mixed-use development of offices, retail and housing for 250,000 people. The plan includes one of the largest shopping malls in Africa, a luxury apartment in 150 metre high skyscrapers, such as those in the artist's impression on the screen. Here, a three bed apartment will cost between 775,000 to 1 million 900,000 pounds. So it's definitely a development for elite Lagosians and overseas investors. Echo Atlantic City has many other benefits for its wealthy clients, such as its own independent power station, so residents don't have to face the frequent power cuts that occur across the city, and its own sewage management system, so it is not having to use the same old poorly maintained pipes as the rest of the city. Residents will also have their own international school and international hospital, and excellent transport links including a light railway, water taxis on the canal system, and a modern efficient road network, which are all restricted for the general public. There will also be a robust security system in place, which is important in a city with a high rate of crime, so residents here can feel safe living away from the busier parts of Lagos. So let's have a think about whether this is really improving life for the urban poor. 
Well, as a project is expected to generate $1 billion annually to the Nigerian economy when it is fully complete, and that should then trickle down into the rest of the city. There will be increased revenue for the government to invest in improving housing and infrastructure, which should improve life for the urban poor. However, many argue that the development will mainly benefit corporate investors, developers, politicians and overseas property speculators and it might actually make the urban poor feel more excluded because of how elite that development actually feels. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on the Echo Atlantic City project. Thank you for watching.